As anyone following the battle over abortion knows, one of the truths the pro-life movement holds most dear is the truth that life begins at conception. That magical moment when two cells from two different bodies come together to form an entirely new body. The way we see it, if those two cells are alive, distinctly human, and distinct from the mother, those two cells are a completely new human being that deserves the right to life. Several pro-choice sources know how important the truth is to the pro-life movement. If the world recognizes that the clump of cells inside a woman's womb is indeed a human being, the world will recoil at the idea of the right to terminate it. It's impossible to justify killing an innocent human being. To pass pro-abortion legislation anyways, the pro-choice movement has suggested that viability, the ability of a fetus to live outside of the womb, is what determines whether the fetus is alive enough to legally protect. Some states require the fetus to pass through the birth canal or to be otherwise extracted from the womb to be considered alive. The pro-choice movement also suggests that the, that should be the fetus alive in utero, it is only alive in the way that somebody's appendix is alive. And we all know what we do when somebody's appendix becomes an inconvenience. This video will serve as a friendly reminder that science does not judge between living and dead whether or not the organism happens to inhabit a womb or even whether or not the organism can live independently. It's also a reminder that biology points to the fetus being a distinct organism, and a human one too. The more philosophical proofs of a fetus's humanity will come in a later video, but for now, I'll just content myself with what biology has to say on the issue. Biology has provided us a list of the properties of life, or the requirements for being considered biologically alive. The big mystery is just how long this list of properties really is. I've seen lists with as few as six, and some with as many as ten. For this video, I am using the properties of life instead in the Campbell Biology textbook. If there is another property that the scientific community has adopted that has not made it on the list, let us know in the comments. Until then, our properties of life are order, reproduction, growth and development, energy processing, regulation, response to the environment, evolutionary adaption. Let's start with the first characteristic. All living things have order. A newly conceived fetus, also known as a zygote, is two cells contributing their genetic material to make one new cell. One cell might not seem like enough to constitute order, but there is so much going on in this one cell, and only an extreme level of organization could allow for it all to work. Think back to how difficult some parts of biology class were. If you never took biology, I'll just give you a glimpse at how complex the cell is. Firstly, just as our bodies have organs, the cell has organelles that carry out different functions in the cell. The nucleus holds the blueprints for the cell. The ribosomes make the proteins that carry out so many important functions in the cell. And of course, the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. There are several other organelles with their own roles. If this isn't enough order, what if I were to tell you that this one cell has its own system of code, DNA, the genetic material in our cells? is nothing more than strands of code. Certain molecules come, copy this code, and send it off to the ribosomes. These ribosomes use the code to construct proteins. Now this is only the messily summarized version of the process. To explain it in full would likely require several college courses. This is also only one of several complex cellular processes necessary to the survival of the cell. Order, the sort that would fulfill the first property of life, is needed to make sure all these processes happen when they're supposed to. The second characteristic is reproduction. Technically, this characteristic applies more on a species level rather than an individual level. If it didn't, every single infertile person wouldn't be considered living. But in a way, a newly conceived fetus can reproduce. Within the first two days of fertilization, 
a group of cells can separate from the rest and start forming another human. This is how identical twins come to be. As I said before, reproduction does not indicate life on an individual level, but I still think it's pretty cool that a newly conceived fetus can still sort of fulfill this criteria in its own special way. The third principle is that of growth and development. I don't think I need to explain this one. Somehow an itty bitty organism consisting of one cell becomes an infant that you could carry in your arms just nine months later. I attribute this to growth and development. The fourth principle is energy processing. This one just comes with being made of cells. Cellular respiration is how individual cells convert oxygen and glucose molecules from food into ATP, the energy currency of life. This energy is harvested so that it can be used to get more food, so that the molecules can be used to get more energy, so that it can be used to get more food, and so on and so on. The next two principles, regulation and response to the environment, go together. Together, these principles make up homeostasis, which is an organism's ability to maintain steady interior conditions, no matter what challenges the environment poses. In short, living things have survival mechanisms. Newly fertilized zygotes need to survive somehow, and the only way that is going to work out long term is if they implant in the uterine wall. As I quickly discovered when researching for this video, implantation is a kind is kind of complicated and requires the zygote to mature into something that can actually pull off the process. By the time implantation has happened, the zygote has split into several cells, many of these cells having different functions in order to accomplish implantation. The embryo locates a specific spot in the uterine wall called the decidua, and it aligns itself in, the just, in just the right way to properly attach. This certainly demonstrates a response to the environment. The embryo wouldn't align itself if it didn't detect that it needed to. And every cell division that has taken place since fertilization has been anticipation for this moment. So from the very beginning, this new life form has been working to stabilize itself and survive. Regulation and response to the environment have been fulfilled. The final principle is the principle of evolutionary adaption. This one is definitely more of a species-oriented principle than an individual-oriented principle. Species evolve over generations. One person is not generations. The best an individual can do to fulfill this principle is, being, is belonging to a species that has evolved over time. If we hold that biological matter that composes the human race has evolved, then this new embryo is a member of the human race, fulfills this principle as much as one individual organism can. From a biological standpoint, this embryo does belong to the human race. It has 46 chromosomes, two of each of the 23 types of chromosomes, particular to humans, and those chromosomes in the embryo's cell will be the same chromosomes in its cells nine months later. Experience confirms this. Never have a man and woman conceived and given birth to anything but a human. Humans have never born dogs or cats into this world, only humans. We have certainty that the life form created by a man's sperm and a woman's egg will emerge from the womb as a human baby. And science tells us that there has been no change in the genetic makeup of this child from the moment it was conceived to the moment it left the womb. Lawmakers have tried to determine biological markers of an embryo's identity as an individual human as opposed to a mass of cells. I think the merging of two cells, 23 chromosomes each, into one cell with the full human genome is the most substantial biological change science will find. Be sure to like and subscribe and see you next time.